Hello and welcome to Lovely English Stories. This story is written for intermediate English learners. Join our new Patreon community page as an all-access Patreon and you can get the PDF transcript of this and other stories today. You can find the link in the notes below. B1, B2, English Story The Breakup The atmosphere was full of anger. You could cut the tension with a knife. Andy and Fliss weren't talking, and as both of them were so stubborn, their disagreement was not going to get resolved any time soon. The argument was petty, really. They were always falling out. Sometimes they wondered why they got together in the first place. They bickered and tormented each other constantly these days. But then, when things were good, they were great. When things were going well, they always forgot about the tough times. Isn't that how most relationships work? Not everything can be sunshine and roses. Sometimes partners can be frustrating, annoying or demanding. But we love them, so we put up with the annoying or trivial things they do. But when does it get too much? When do you decide to give it up and throw in the towel for the single life? Andy and Fliss had met on their last day of university. They were both invited to a student party by a mutual friend. At first, Fliss didn't like Andy at all. She thought he was arrogant and self-involved, but it turned out he was shy, and so he came across like he thought he was better than everyone else. Andy instantly liked Fliss. She was vivacious. She had so much to talk about and really intrigued him. He hadn't met someone like her before. At the party, they only talked to each other as part of a wider group. After the party was over, they didn't think of each other again. After all... They were just someone who happened to be at the same place at the same time. Six months went by before they crossed paths again. Fliss was working in a graduate role in London for a well-known marketing company and Andy had just got a job working at a charity. Fliss wasn't really enjoying living in London. She didn't get on with her housemates and was struggling to adjust to the fast-paced life of the city. She felt like she was constantly chasing her tail and didn't have time to just be and enjoy the experience. The good thing was that she enjoyed her job. It didn't pay amazingly but the people were nice and she was learning a lot. Plus, she knew once she'd finished her graduate training, she would get a hefty pay rise. Andy had only been in London for two weeks when he decided to check out a local coffee shop on his lunch break. It was there that he accidentally bumped into someone carrying a hot coffee and spilt it all over her new white dress. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Wait, don't I know you from somewhere? Andy and Fliss took a second to retrace their memories. Well, now I know you as the man who has ruined my new dress. After that, Andy bought Fliss a new coffee and promised to transfer her some money to pay for a new dress. He felt awful. Her lovely silk outfit now had a big coffee stain 
all over it. They got chatting on the way out of the coffee shop, and it was then that they clicked and put two and two together. Andy was nothing like how Fliss had remembered him. He was courteous and kind. He was very gentle and obviously distraught that he'd potentially burnt her, never mind ruined her dress. They stood outside the coffee shop and both ended up being late back to their respective offices. At least Fliss had an excuse when she walked to her desk in her coffee-stained outfit. They decided to exchange numbers and, long story short, they started dating. Suddenly London wasn't the awful place Fliss was beginning to think it was. Andy made her days brighter and Fliss brought excitement and fun to his. Fast forward five years and the couple are living in South London. They've travelled the world together, had a pet cat together and knew each other like the back of their hands. The only problem was that the rose-tinted glasses had well and truly come off. They were starting to despise each other. Their words were often filled with anger and venom. They snapped and bickered constantly. They often found they had little conversation and couldn't see what attracted them to each other in the first place. The thing that kept them going was their mutual love of the same hobbies. They often went climbing and wakeboarding together. Not only that, but they had the same group of friends. So if they were to split up, would they have to split up their friends too? They weren't really sure what had gone wrong, but it seemed that over the last year or so, they had become incredibly irritated by each other. They knew things weren't right, but they didn't know what to do about it. It was time to take a leap of faith and break up. But breaking up is always easier said than done. Breaking up would mean a complete life change. One of them would have to leave the flat and they'd have to start all over again. Fliss worried that she would start to hate London without Andy in her life, and Andy worried about the repercussions a breakup would have on their friendship group. They had many lengthy discussions about their relationship and the problems they were having. They still cared very much for each other, but they realised that they would be happier apart than together. In the end, they decided to have a trial separation. Luckily, Andy's friend was working abroad for a month, so he let him stay at his flat for free, as long as he promised to water his plants and take his dog for walks. During this time, Fliss and Andy decided to keep their contact to a minimum. It was incredibly difficult for them. They both missed each other very much, but they realised that they didn't miss the constant arguments. Somehow, they both felt less stressed and happier, even though they really missed each other's company. After the month was over, they decided to meet in their favourite park and go for a walk. It was very emotional. They both knew, deep down, that the right thing to do would be to break up, but they made a promise to each other that they would try to be friends. They talked about what to do with the flat, and Andy decided that he would move out. They built their life together, and now... They were slowly taking it all apart. Aside from losing Fliss in his life, 
Andy was also sad to say goodbye to their pet cat, but Fliss promised that he could visit her whenever he wanted. The first few months after their breakup were very tough. They both missed each other and found it hard not to call and text to talk about their day. They did try to talk every few weeks and realised that they were starting to become good friends. They always had that base to their relationship and without the added pressure of trying to make everything work, their friendship seemed to blossom. Of course, there were days when they were upset or frustrated with each other, but generally they got on well and knew they had made the right decision. Neither of them moved on quickly. They weren't looking for someone else. They just didn't want to have constant arguments with each other anymore. After six months, they decided to meet up again and go climbing together. They were so glad they did, because they realised any romantic feeling had gone and their relationship was purely platonic. Now they could enjoy meeting for coffees, going for walks and enjoying their favourite sports together. Andy even visited to see their cat once in a while. Sometimes couples can make it work, but Fliss and Andy decided to make their friendship work instead. It wasn't easy, but they knew they still wanted to be a part of each other's lives and would work hard at keeping their friendship alive. We hope you enjoyed this lovely English story. Thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share.